hello and welcome back to part 15 of the Enterprise NX-1 build. Um, today is a, going to be a part 2 of doing the lighting on the top saucer, so let's get started. There we go. Beautiful. Now I'm hoping those aren't, they're pretty bright, but not terrible. You're definitely going to be able to see the, the go to that carbo bay. Ah, uh, there we go. Let me get it so you can see it in the camera. There you go, and then uh, then they get a clear cover that goes over top. I don't want to paint the cover blue. If I can leave things clear, I like to. That's why I like how the deflector dish on the... the uh, deflector dish on the um, refit turned out because I just hit missed the inside with a white as a diffuser so then it's just white when it's off and then it goes through its amber and blues when I light it up unfortunately this deflector dish on this I had to color the plastic blue because if I would use a blue left it clear and use the blue LED use the blue LED strip here I would have to uh, light block that blue around that blue LED strip so it doesn't send blue throughout the whole sensor and that it's just easier just to <laughs> straight up just do it this way it's fine a lot of people like to still see them because then when you you know the paint them or have the things colored like you know on all the nacelles and stuff because even when it's off you see the color and it gives you that impression but um to me i like the ability that it looks like the engine's off like i think with my d i'm gonna do those chiller grills in with a light mist of copper so when it's off you know you see the copper in that area but when you turn on the blue that the, the copper or the goldish or copper i believe is uh, thin enough that when you turn them on you know boom there's your uh, blue lights for the nacelles and that's also why I like the nacelles on the refit is because it has a lot of black and you, you can't see it and I, and I did light them with a blue light and so they they just look black until you you kick the light on and I did the same thing with the crystals that are on top of the nacelles I just put two blue SMDs pointing up they look clear until they turn on anywhere I can do that like I rather I'm trying to think of how I did the impulse engines on the did I paint that car? no I left that clear um, the impulse uh, engines on the uh, refit are clear and it totally you know and it's a red LED that turns it on um, but on here and same thing with the the thrust the uh, impulse engines on this ship I had to color the glass uh, blue and I slightly colored the ball with some transparent blue but it doesn't bleed into the rest of it but if I had a blue LED like this it would have bled into the other lights the other you know marker lights on that shit on it and it would just wouldn't have been good but I like that I wonder if I can Let's see how bad or how overly bright if it is let's see how much light it actually is thrown on that bay well we got good reflection because look at the blue light but uh trying to do this without making a mess that looks really good that's not bad it's bright it's bright it's probably really over the camera's definitely overdoing it but I could live with that I might try to diffuse them a bit and then 
also got to remember, I think that the decal that goes down here, it's going to be darker. Right now, I'm dealing with reflection off of that silver. But that looks good. Just the exact effect I wanted. You know, I'm glad I didn't go with like a white light, though. A white light would have really been like... I like that. And I'm, I'm thinking the decal is a, is a darker decal. So, let's see if I can take some black shrink tube and simulate. Yeah, see how it tones it down? I don't know if that's going to show up in camera, but it gets rid of all the reflection. Yet I get a good backlight on that those doors. But you know, you want to keep it the scale, so you don't want them to be boosh, you know. So I think I will diffuse them with some. I don't know if white would do the trick. I think white would. I know that's what Boyd from Truckworks does. Um, uses a lot of white, you know. And you can use color, you can put color on the LED strip, so I think that would do it. And plus, the like I said, the decal that goes down is a, you know, a black pattern. So I think that'll tone it down, but I'd like to tone it down just even looking directly at it. So, but the effect is definitely what I like. Just now it looks like they got floodlights on back there and it's supposed to be a little dimmer and I wish I had like a 600 and something uh, resistor to bring it down. Like I said, I, I'll, I'll try the white. And I, I'll try it with the acrylic, so if I don't like it, I can just dab it off with, wipe it away. But, uh, for the most part, I can fix that, being that bright. And I just had to order some, uh, higher end resistors, because that's something I'm going to be doing a lot, is stuff like that, and where I want to dim it down. I did it with the refit, um the lounge the officer's lounge i did a warm led smd in the corner and uh i dimmed it down with a resistor but i must have used a 510 and but hey it's working so very very happy all right so every circuit so far i've tested Oh, nope, I haven't tested these. Nope, I still have that battery charger, I'm not sure. Like I said, I think this camera here is not one to uh, tell me where the charge is at, and it doesn't seem to really. You know, it's the older one I did like about the other cameras it, it you know I can just plug it in and run the camera and this one should you would think but let's see how those are working hey nice let's turn on the lights again and I'll, I'll uh, actually I might not even light block those because it's just gonna act like a like the LED strip. That looks good too. Oops, looping around here. That looks really nice. I really like the triangle cone, which you might not be able to see in camera a little bit, but in person it really looks good. Yeah. Now hopefully I get the same effect out here, but wider. I don't think it'll be wider, but that light's still going to be back there.
Well, it might be because I'm I'm not using these are uh, they look like um, lighthouse LEDs I think they call them where they're square and then they have the you know the long skinny pop part that comes out. But yeah, that's looking good. Um, but they have. Uh, I guess that's what they call a lighthouse LED. They're not just this round, they're flat and kind of square and then they have a little bump sticking out. So I don't know if they consider this particular one a lighthouse, but it still has that focus point. So if I would do something like that, you know, where like you saw how these, these back here just immediately gets wide and that's what I'm putting in here. I'm sneaking a SMD in that for the uh, spot here so I'm hoping it really gets wide now I'm gonna try to sneak it up as close as I can which I think you know I did test all that so I think I can get it right up in there and then glue it and then the uh, reds the two reds and the green are gonna be uh, fiber optics where they, they're seen but they're not glowing red and green out here all right so all circuits are working and I can tuck those under the posts. And do a full on test here. And it's getting late and but I could do that quick before I call it a, a evening and come back tomorrow and and tomorrow we'll be doing two LEDs here. One goes in there for the tower and then the single one shines at the two holes that will uh, light up the two lower ones, two outer ones. Already uh, I already hit those with uh, candy bit glue in there and I'll uh, hit some of the hall paint color in there to help light block because I can see a couple little leaks. Nothing major. I, I, I can live with all that. No. I think I'm done soldering for tonight. So we'll have those two LEDs. We got these two LEDs. We got the strobes out oh, and the one here. So I got to do the the fast strobe, the fast flashers, and then then the red and the green nabs, and then I got to do the pulsating ones, flickering ones. I'm going to do there, which I'm just going to jump right off of this. So that's not a big deal. That's just a boom. I'm just getting them position is going to be the fun part. And I probably will save that to last. This one here will run a separate circuit unless I jump that off of this. But I think with those two, I'll run a separate circuit. It seems like the more you get under these binding posts anyway, the better it is because it can fit a pretty decent amount of wire in there. So I want to make sure I do that. And then I can go either way and then run the jumper between doesn't matter the whole thing's going to charge the power but I might let's see that that one came out because it's such just one wire doesn't really give it anything to grab onto because the the screw kind of has a point and then the, it looks like uh, the barrel's round but it can push the wires off to the side so actually the more you the thicker to gauge wire so if you bundle a bunch of these small ones together it gives it a better definitely gives it a better uh, try to get you under there again and definitely soldering the wire too helps And I'm soldering all the ones, all the small ones too. So they all just spread when, when the screw comes down. 
There we go. I don't want some faulty thing to happen with that. That's why sometimes I, I'm wondering if it would be just better off just to, uh, like I always do, just solder them into one thing and shrink tube them. <laughs> but the nice thing is I am all these negatives and I'm going to solder all the new leads that I just did today together. So, how many leads did we do today? Just a pair. This pair and this pair. But yeah, you can see I, like, I soldered all those negatives together. So what I'll do is, I'll first twist somehow. these two together. And like I said, you got almost got to get your fingernail on the play to get them to twist. Is everybody in there good? Mm, could be better. Mm, let's see. You want to make sure you're stripping the same length, too. I don't want too much solder on here because I want it to twist on the other bundle. So come off there, extra solder. Outside that. Aha. There we go. We're all soldered together, and I can stick you under. Well, let's hold off because it makes it easier to get to the red. All right, we'll do the same here. Come on. It's fun one that doesn't just didn't do anything but just bend around once. Yeah, I'm twisting the insulation in like a million times.
Who's that? All right. Install. But like I said, the more I keep adding to it, but I think these are going to jump off these. These all run there, so there'll be another wire under there. Um, and then these, but these get. Now these are going to get power from the bottom. The, uh, the uh, strobe board circuits are going to be on the bottom of the saucer. So, yeah, it's just going to be these. will be the last two. But once there are the last wires in there, I'll solder them real heavy. And, like I said, they are soldered together. Which, the solder gives something soft for the screw to grab into. That's why I always do that instead of just sticking the wires in there and going for it. A, it keeps any of those wires running up. Just twist out. And, uh... I like... I do like things to be as neat as possible. I mean, it's never going to be seen again unless someone rips this apart somewhere down in the future. When I'm dead and gone. But alright. Um, seems like I don't think I need a soldering iron gun on anymore tonight. Time to call tonight. I was hoping to get more done today, but that's always. I procrastinate. Well, not even procrastinate. I start thinking too far ahead. Like, what's going on with bees? And I'm not there yet. So worry about it then. But yeah, that that hundred ohm thing. It's still got me worried. I mean, they're working in there. I think I even did a light test before I even closed it up. Yeah. And everything looks right, so... And my impulse engines are definitely bright enough. So it's not like I... Or, you know... Well, if I only put 100 ohms, it would be brighter. It's going higher with doing it, but... Yeah, I mean... I don't know. It's, it's kind of bothering me bugging me. I can't see me grabbing two large ones there unless I thought, hmm, you know, and just went for it, you know, because it, it, it would puzzle me to see if there was four in there that I would be like, okay, why is there only four separated? And I looked at every bag and I know I'm going to need more than four resistors. And then look at this bag, and there's a bunch. I mean, there's only one, two, three, four, four left, which would be one, two, three, four for the other. Two for the other, one for each one of these on the lower. Um... Even then, he, like, he has an LED here, so those should have a resistor, too. So there's one, two, 
three, four. And we know we got two for there. Then there should be two for these. And then there should be... So I actually should have one, two, three, four, five. I should actually have six. I should actually have two more. Four seventies, I would think. And I haven't built anything else. And if I use two of these for something in there, then I should have the correct amount of those, because then it'll be the other two. So, and I added a flasher light on that navigation on the lower hall, but that doesn't get a resistor. Only the the blue and the green, but for the white, it doesn't get a resistor because I think that's enough. I think the flash circuit takes the resistor. Who knows? It's all good. I have the resistors for it. The only thing, that, like I said, that bothers me is making sure I'm not under, I'm overpowering something. That's the only thing that's bothering me. I'll have to look at the nacelles too to make sure I didn't do it in there. But the only things that needed resistor on there would have been the red and the green navigation lights on that. Anywho, I'm rambling again. Sorry, folks. Let's do a full-on light test there. Everything is lit. Yep, everything is nicely lit. And we flip the ship over. She's looking good. And it even looks better when you put the lower saucer on because then it gets the bright reflection. The top lights get the reflection from the bottom. I can see in here. I found it's easy to get the back two on. Keep you coming out the not that way. Oh, it is closed. Oh, she shut. She shut down really nice. And while I was doing that, I should put the uh, see if I can sneak this in there. dish which actually looks really good it's not a flashlight on the camera yeah it does but to here and then especially when it's gonna have the, the, the actual radar the actual dish stuck in here Get her just semi stay. Yeah. And that just made it tilt. There we go. Set it back down. But like, if, 
the camera's not going to show you, but it's a little dark on these ends, but I think that's that's where those flickering lights are going to come in. You know, and if they're a little bright on those corners, that's okay, because I wanted to do that flicker in there. Hey, I am very, very, very happy. With the way, let's see if I can tilt this down so you can see it better. I'm very happy with it. Let's put them in there so I don't lose them. And I still can't get out of my mind where that, uh, <laughs> where those other two 100s are. I hope I didn't do something stupid. I know myself, so that's why I'm worried. <laughs> but like I said, I'm also logical on saying why is there only four here? And I know I have plenty more uh, LEDs that need resistors to be done. So that's what I'm, that's my saving grace that, you know, I do have OCD and I would have questioned that. Especially when I know there's another bag that has a whole bunch of them. But could I had a, a brain fart thinking because the four seventies that I got are big, and thinking maybe those were one hundred. But if I remember from the refit, the only ones I needed the one hundreds were the flashers. The, you know, the red and like out of the flashers, the the refit has a single flash here, two back here, and then the red and the green, and they all flash together. The white ones. The two whites here and the one white here didn't need any resistors. The flashboard took care of it, but the red and the greens did. And uh, so I should have known that. But here we are. That looks good. The decking it back. I, like I said, I'm going to try to diffuse it a little more. But it looks nice. Yeah, I like how you see. The actual light fixture, so that gives it that light fixture look like I've seen in the show. Um, I'm actually getting some light to those <laughs> back windows, but even not that one LED back there yet. My deflector dish is. I came off a skew again. without it falling off. Um, like I said, I wanted that more warm light to come out of those cargo bay area. So that's working really good. And it still seems like these here on the outer edges, these little beacon lights are still going to have some white. Um, that one looks a little yellow. You probably can't see it because there's tape holding that SMD. Uh, what else looks really good? Uh, I'm getting plenty of light on the coming out of that, so I know uh, that that cargo bay is going to have plenty of light to light the few windows that are in there. Um, the windows in the back. Let's see. I can get it to spin that way with the wire. Those are looking really good that I did the photo etch and did the crystal uh, the canopy glue that's lighting good so I'm happy about that so everything I'm very happy with so we're gonna call it for this part and we'll come back and uh, keep on trucking with her uh, like I said, next we'll we'll light the uh, let's disconnect this. Um, we'll come back and uh, work on the lights. Like I said, there's the one that goes up through here to light the tower in the center window here, and then we'll do the light. One LED that blows back and hits these two, and although it's getting pretty good light already, um, we'll take care of the two. Uh, 
lights there to get my flickering effect to my deflector dish. Um, and then we'll do, it's going to be a single LED with six fiber optics that'll do the two reds and the green on each side here. And then a little SMD that'll hopefully give me that spot across here. Um, till then, I'll see you soon. Okay, uh, got quite a bit further here on the lighting of the upper saucer. Um, as you can see, pretty much everything is in place and done except for attaching the uh, navigation lights and the, the strobe lights. The strobe light that goes here, here, and there. And then I just got to attach the, uh, connect the wires to these, and then I'll put a, JST connector on that so I can contact to the board which I still do have to build those yet too but I'll worry about that when I get to the lower section the lower saucer next but I already have a connector here to attach the power between the upper and lower and then I'll do the same for the navigation and the strobes so it'll just be a quick snap snap when it comes to gluing all this together now the tie power up to here and the power to the strobe and uh, the strobe and navigation lights but yeah I got the, the uh, deflector dish uh, lighting going pretty well that's looking good I did the pulsating ones on the corner with a little bit of a strip here it's working really good um, I got the fiber optics in for those uh, lights that are under there. Um, I'll turn it on and show you, but every now I'm, I'm, I hit them with a little bit of paint to get a little more color out of them. And I'll put them back in. Uh, what else have I done? I got all the cargo bay lights in. I think, believe the last time you, I showed this, it was just a lighting strip and I had to loop all the wires in between them. Um, what else did we get in? We got the uh, turbocharger lights in. They look really good. Um, like I said, I think the leaf said before, I ran with a warm light here, so that will light up the photo at uh, Shuttle Bay. It will give it a different lighting to it. Uh, we got the lighting for the tower lights in, and then I ran two little SMDs here on the end to shine down on that little where there's like cargo bay doors here and these two little LEDs will give that kind of like surface mounted uh, LED look it was getting dim enough I think I think I got them to where I'm, I'm happy they're probably a little brighter than what shows on the TV show but you know I can still fit them out you know fiddle with that maybe change another resistor out and See if I can get them a little dimmer. I've been hitting them a little bit with a little bit of white paint to, to diffuse them and dim them down a little bit too. So I haven't really checked to see how that's worked recently. I hit that wire with a little bit of paint that I cross across there just to make sure it doesn't show through the windows. It hasn't been, but just a precaution. I hate to glue it together and then that's what will happen. Um, I got little wire leads out on each end for the... Uh, secondary impulse engines so I just notched that out there and then uh, I just quick jumpered off of one of those LED strips and uh, when since those are going to go on after I put the ship on together to glue it together I have the wire leads for that that'll be nice and simple and this is just so I can test power so I, I can actually show you how it's actually looking Let me attach this up here it was just easier to keep a little wire here like this to test them instead of trying to clip on the little prongs there and I don't want to bend them all out of shape uh, there she is all lit and you can see the little SMDs back there which are working great uh, I got a, I just went with a 1.8 millimeter light for the spot in the front it definitely gives 
a nice spot look to it. Um, I think I can stick these fibers back in now. I think that's dry. Stick them back in there. See how they're looking. Yeah, it's better. It, gave, it was just the the light was definitely fizzling out the color. Now that the reds are more brilliant, the greens more brilliant. I don't know if you can yeah, you can get a see of that now. So they're looking good. And you can see the flickering LEDs that will be for the saucer and it'll look much better once I put it together for you, but this might give you a, a semi idea. No, it's kind of hard to see until I get it together. But let's actually lower the this part on. It's so much easier to see when it's all together. These pins line up. need to stay like that. There we go. I think we got it now. And what I should do is quickly try to sneak this deflector dish in there. Oop, upside down. It's a little hard on the camera to see the, the pulsating light. You can kind of get it because it's washing it out in the camera. Plus that spot that I put on there is working really good. But as you can see, the those are looking really good. I'm really happy with those. Um, all the lighting is looking good. The spots up here look really good. Coming out of over top of those uh, cargo bays. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Just got to get these strobes going and the nav lights going. The, the uh, turbochargers, you know, they're going to be extremely bright right now because I haven't put the clear part over top of it yet. Um, Tower is lighting pretty nice. I just got to do some touch up. I did some canopy glue to fill in the gaps and then I'll go and touch them up and then uh, the lights that I did back here and you know the camera is making it a lot brighter than it is but I got them down to where it's going to be dim plus then this platform will be a uh, right now it's reflecting a lot off of that because it's a shiny you know hull color but I believe the decal that goes there is going to be dark so that'll help you know pull off some of that reflection and dim it down a bit so but I'm happy with that it's looking good and then that's what it's looking like on the bottom so I think it's getting time to move to the bottom to put the clear windows in put the windows in and get some of the power get the boards in and get its nav and strobes up um, Put the piece I think I'm just gonna do the same thing as I did up here on those if they're showing up and they're just fiber optics and I might actually put I think on the lower half I think what I'm gonna do is raise up with two pieces of styrene and a flat piece across um, 
to uh, and run an LED strip across here in the bottom to light this bottom sensor, you know, dish part really well. But I'm going to raise it up pretty good because there's plenty of space here. And then I'm also going to, you know, do a LED strip on that flat piece going across like a bridge, down and then up towards the bridge because it does get a little bit dimmer up here from the reflections. These have a brilliant, and then as it gets up here, it does get a little dimmer, and plus I think it'll make these little spots that I put in without actually putting LEDs in them. There's three of them, one, two, and three, without actually putting LEDs in them. And it's gonna be hard to see. You can just see them above those three windows here. That'll bring a little more light up in there. And that's the first that that's falling out. Usually that stays in there pretty good. But yeah, I'm liking it and uh, you know tweaking and but I think the top is like I said, just doing those nav and strobe lights. It's looking pretty good. And then also start getting working on these torpedo launchers, which I gotta remember I'm running a separate power feed to that them on a switch because I don't want them always going so but yeah things are coming along smoothly so I just wanted to get a give an update on where it is and turn that on I'll get rid of some of that and where I'm at it's coming along good definitely done some trial and error took a little bit to get these positioned correctly where it was shining enough across this and but not overpowering I'm really happy with that and it, then it gets a different little color in here because these are white but they're a little off you know not as white white as the window lights are and like I said I did the yellow the warm one way back there too and just the glare from the saucer itself you know you can see it's a warmer one back here because I wanted a more of a you know interior warmth in the in the shuttle bay because it's never really overly lit in the shuttle bay you know it's not bright fluorescent light like lights in there so and it's not really interfering too much with the with the um, other windows but once that photo etch piece goes in here and that's gonna line right up once that photo etch piece goes in there that I'm hoping that'll do that this shuttle bay, this cargo bay doesn't really have a lot of windows. I think there's a couple on just on the side, so I'll see how it works, and then maybe I'll put a little strip there and there to make them go a little brighter. But I think it'll be fine with what's bouncing around in there. So, but I wanted to give a little bit of a difference to the shuttle bay. So, um, no, be back in a little bit later. We'll. I'll get started on the lower section. Gotta take a break from the upper part of the hall here, and I'll bring you an update on how the lower half of the saucer is going. So until then, see ya.